Welcome to Twisted Liquid RC Boats. Good day everyone and welcome back to Twisted Liquid RC Boats and the continuation in our Zip Kits SLR Missile Thunderboat build. I know it's been a little while since I said hello to you guys but just been a little bit busy in life and haven't had a lot of time to be at the boat but we do have some work done since you last seen it and we did receive some parts in the mail so today we're going to continue on and do a little chore that we got to get done and we're going to install our stuffing box in the hull of our boat we also have our stuffing tube ready to install in our boat once we anneal it and we bend it and get it in a perfect position but first we must get our stuffing box installed and we're going to do it per the way the manual says to do so. Guys, you need to purchase two brass tubes basically in order to do the stuffing box and the stuffing tube in this boat. You will need a piece of 11-32nd brass tubing, which I got from K&S Supplies, no problem. I cut it down to a 3.5 inch length, like the manual suggests, and I took the time to scuff it up and sand it a little bit with some 60 grit paper in order to give it a rough surface so that we have good adhesion with any epoxy we're going to use in it. I simply cut my tube guys with a tube cutter. Now if you don't have one of these little tools I suggest that you run and purchase yourself one. It's a very inexpensive tool and it will give you a perfect clean cut when you tighten it and slowly spin your tube in the cutter as it cuts it gently. You will notice that it may squat your tube in a little bit and you may have to chamfer the end but it's no big deal. Okay what we're gonna do now guys is I'm pretty much ready to put the stuffing box in the boat. We're gonna reposition the camera we're gonna get you guys a little bit of a better view and we're going to flip the boat over and flip it back again because we do have to do a couple procedures. You'll notice I got the boat on a stand which is going to make our life easy for doing this and we already have our engine in place and snugged into the hull of our boat. We need to get this done. When I do reposition the camera you're going to notice that I have a quarter inch wooden dowel approximately six inches long in the collet of the boat right now. That's going to act as our drive shaft for our boat while we are installing our stuffing box and using our stuffing tube for alignment. So I'm going to shut the camera down, I'm going to reposition it, and we're going to install the stuffing box in our Zipkits SLR Missile Thunderboat today. Okay guys, now that I got the camera repositioned so you guys can get a better view of the procedure we're going to do today with our Zipkits SLR missile, let's continue on and install our stuffing box into our hull. I've got our 11-32nd brass tube cut down to 3.5 inches long and I have it sanded slightly with 60 grit sandpaper in order to roughen the surface on the outside to promote adhesion with our epoxy when we epoxy it in. You'll notice I have a quarter inch wooden dowel all the way up in my collet and tightened. It is down through the slot in the bottom of the hull. This quarter inch wooden dowel is now representing our drive shaft and its position of where it would be in the boat. What we're going to do is we're going to take our 11 32nd tube and we are going to merely slide it on over our 5 16th stuffing tube and once we get it about a quarter of an inch to 3 8 of an inch right here we are going to take it and slide it up over our quarter inch wooden dowel which we have positioned in our hull representing our drive shaft. Now if I take my time I'm leaning in over the camera and I'm going to try not to move you guys too much I'm going to slide this up in place very easily without wiggling everything and I'm going to position it so I can remove my collet nut off of my collet if I do want to in the future. 
it says in the manual that you should leave a quarter inch gap. I'm figuring that I'm going to probably have to leave about three eighths of an inch gap in order to do so. So now that we have our stuffing box in our hole positioned properly, and we have our stuffing tube up through the middle of it, sitting on our quarter wooden dowel, which is acting as our drive shaft, we know approximately exactly where we have to get our drive shaft tube positioned in our hull in order to get everything lined up properly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a tiny little bit of CA glue and I'm merely going to tack it right here just to hold it in position. Once I got it held in position exactly where I want it, we're going to flip the hull over and we're going to do a little taping on the bottom before we mix our epoxy up and we apply it right here around the slot in the bottom of our hull. I'll get this lightly CA'd in place right here and then we'll flip the boat over and we'll tape the bottom hull up before we do our epoxy work. Okay guys, now that we got our stuffing box positioned in our hull perfectly and tacked with just a little tiny bit of CA glue to hold it in place. We got the boat flipped over. We're still using our 5 16th stuffing tube for alignment over our wooden dowel, which is right in our, into our collet. And our stuffing tube is right up against it right now through our stuffing box. So now to prepare to get this ready to be epoxied into the hull, we're going to do like they say in the manual, and we're going to tape this area up really really well with some masking tape and this is going to prevent any epoxy from coming out through the bottom of the hull when we apply it on the inside. Now I'm going to take my time lay down a couple nice pieces of tape here keep everything nice and neat get ourselves set up so that when we flip this boat back over we can mix up some epoxy about a quarter ounce they're asking us to mix up in the manual and we can add some filler to it we're going to add some colloidal silica to it and once we get a good mix on it we're going to apply it all around the inside of our stuffing tube and our stuffing box I should say and that's going to let us get this done and sealed up and taken care of very nicely so I'm just going to take my time, get some masking tape in around all of this and prevent any epoxy from coming out through the bottom of our hull when we start to do this. Alright guys, we got a really nice tape job done on the bottom of our boat around the stuffing box. We're still using our stuffing tube for alignment on our temporary drive shaft wooden dowel. It's right up against our collet. We have everything positioned really nicely. It's time to flip the boat back over, mix up a good batch of epoxy, and we get this stuffing box epoxied in place. Okay guys, we got the camera repositioned, and we're in the process of mixing up a nice batch of Bob Smith Industries 30 minute slow cure epoxy. And we've added some colloidal silica to it to thicken it up. The manual suggests that we mix up approximately a quarter ounce. I've probably mixed a little more, but that's okay. Not too worried about that. We want to get a good coating in around both sides of bulkhead number three with our epoxy. So it fills in all the gaps in our slot for our stuffing box. As you can notice, I still have our stuffing tube positioned up through the stuffing box so that it's in alignment with our collet. I merely have it pushed up right against the collet for now so I know my alignment is perfect. I also still have my quarter inch wooden dowel which is repre representing my drive shaft or drive cable 
whatever you'd like to refer to it as. And that's still inside the 5 16th stuffing tube. So everything is positioned really nicely. And we've got a pretty good mix of colloidal silica and epoxy here now. It's a nice thickened white mix. And we're going to slowly take our time. And we're going to use just a wooden spreading stick for today. And we're going to put a really good coat of epoxy all in around this slot. I hope I'm not taking you guys out of view here. We're going to fill in all the gap around that. I did lightly sand the area around the bottom floor of the boat, of the hull, with some 60 grit sandpaper. And I merely done that so that I could get a really good adhesion with my epoxy. Any rough surface, the epoxy will adhere to a lot better. So we're merely going to let this cure up now for three, four, maybe longer hours. And once it's all cured, I'll come back in and I'll turn the camera back on. And I'll show you our results. And like I say, once we let this cure really good, we can make it look really pretty. And we can just clean it up and make it look like we've done a really nice, neat, tidy job on getting our stuffing box in our boat. So guys, this is once again, like I've said so many times, it's just a job of patience. Take your time, plan your work out, don't be in a rush, line everything up nice. Now guys, I'm real happy with that, and that epoxy is going to settle a little as it starts to flatten out and smear itself out. And I've got no problems with what I'm looking at right there now around that stuffing box. So we're merely going to let all that sit for a while. We're going to let it harden. And once it does, I'll click the camera back on. We'll show you our results. And we should have our stuffing box epoxied in our boat. Okay, guys. We've let our epoxy cure around our stuffing box for about approximately six or seven hours. And it's really dry to the touch, definitely not wet in any way. So, I guess the moment of truth right now, guys, is to lean in over the camera again and slowly slide our stuffing tube back out of our hull with very little resistance, just slowly spinning it back. And it's a snug fit going through the stuffing box itself. And it came right on out, no problem at all, which is exactly what we wanted. And we will have it removed in another second. I'm hoping I don't have to move the boat, but I'm going to. So I need a little more room and I'll be able to slide it out pretty easy. It will come out there now. So that's our stuffing tube removed. We will bring our 516 tube up just a little bit. And we're going to drill a hole right here in the top of this tube right here. And we will solder our 516 tube to our 1132nd tube when we are finished with our stuffing tube install. But right now, I'm very happy because we have our stuffing box in and we have a stuffing tube that will slide up through there no problem at all with very little resistance and will go into a perfect alignment with our collet and that's exactly what we want 
for a good drive shaft, good cable alignment, with our engine mounts positioned in our hull like they are. So once again guys, as I always say at the end of every, every episode, I'd like to thank you for watching the continued build of our Zipkits SLR missile. Twisted Liquid RC Boats cannot say thank you to you guys enough. I truly appreciate everybody who's watched the build of this boat, every little step of it from doing the stuffing box today to starting right at the start of all this and unboxing this boat and taking it out and preparing to build it. Guys, I'm a man who has a bit of patience and every time we get one more little step done, we're getting closer to having our boat completed. Right now, I still have a few parts that I do have to purchase for this boat and that's mainly what's holding it up in any build procedure that needs to be done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get those parts ordered as soon as possible and I'm going to continue on doing my exterior finishing work which as you can see before I leave you today we do have a full coat of West Systems epoxy sealer on the outside of the boat. So I'm going to keep doing my work with the boat. I'm going to keep you guys posted on everything that goes on with it as we're moving along and as we do get parts for it and we'll keep you up to date on everything as it's done but I want to say thank you like I do every time because I truly appreciate your support of this channel anybody who's watching this is a radio control boat enthusiast and this channel I started it to showcase the passion of the radio control boat hobby I dearly am passionate and love this hobby very much I'm so glad I took on this boat and built it. It's been a totally great experience. I don't know if you can tell, but just by the sound of my voice, I'm very happy that I've done it. So guys, I'm glad that all of you've watched. I hope that this is a history of this boat getting built and showcased when it do get ran in the next few weeks when it's finished. Uh, I hope this build series helps anybody who might build a boat for themselves so that they could go through the procedure, probably watch some of these videos, and it would help them step by step to some of the procedures that are in the manual that you have to conquer, you have to get done, and you need to finish in order to build this machine. So, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your channel support. Thank you for all your views. Thank you to all the subscribers. Thank you for all your likes. Thank you for all your comments. I'm going to continue to show my sincere gratitude to you guys for your support of this channel and we are going to showcase nothing but the passion and the love of the radio control boat hobby on this channel because that's what this channel was made for so I want everyone out there to take care of yourself have a really good day and we'll catch you in the next episode there'll be one soon we're not too far away everybody take care Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe. Take care and stay safe.